Today we are talking about one of the most controversial commanders in Rise of Kingdoms and whether or not they are actually still usable in 2024. And that commander is Harold Sigerson. This is a commander that so many people hate on and I don't think people really realize what Harold actually does. So today we are diving deep into Harold and talking about whether or not he is remotely usable in the open field or if he is only good for city hopping with Alexander the Great or with Pakal. If you guys are new here, this is Gaines Gaming. We make Rise of Kingdoms content. So if you do enjoy this video, do me a favor, drop a like and subscribe. And that way you don't miss out on future videos. And so with Harold, obviously he is most well known for being able to city pop with his active skill. You know, seeing that hammer come down or the ax come down is, is kind of cool to see. I love his active skill and how it looks. And, you know, he is a very unique commander because he's one of the very few that has both single and AUE skill damage. So we are going to first go over his skills and then we'll dive into whether or not he is remotely usable or if he is so outdated that nobody should even consider using him. Now, obviously, his active skill is, like I said, single and AOE damage. So if this commander's troop is not surrounded, the skill deals direct damage to the target, damage factor of 1200, relatively low. Or if the troop is surrounded, this skill instead deals direct damage up to three nearby enemy troops, damage factor 1500, every additional target reduces damage by 15%. And after using the skill, their troop gains a 20% bonus to damage dealt for two seconds, which is pretty crazy. Now, obviously his damage factor is pretty low if you are not being surrounded. And then if you are surrounded, obviously you're doing 1500 up to three nearby enemy troops, so 4,500, but then you have the 15% reduction to each enemy. So still pretty solid damage. You know, that's going to come out to be about like 3,800 damage factor, I believe, if my math is correct. Someone correct me down below if I'm wrong, but about 35 to 3,800 damage factor at the end of the day between those three troops. So still about 1,200, but 1,200 between those three troops. Now his second skill, if the commander's troop is attacking a city or stronghold, infantry units in their troop gain 10% attack, and whenever their troop takes damage, has a 10% chance to reduce the damage by 30%. Now, obviously, this is only for rallying, which, you know, he actually is a good rallier. If you were using Pakal Herald, you know, it's it's very, very anti-swarm. It's very, very tanky. You don't really want to swarm that because it would hurt. And it's a really good city rally as well. You know, it, obviously not as good as a Tilt Takeda, but it's a decent rally. You can still use it in 2024. Obviously, there's better options available, you know, like uh, Pakal Tariq, Tariq Pakal, uh, there's better options that you can use, but Harold still could be thrown in the mix and still trade really well, especially if they do try to swarm you. Now his third skill, this troop gains 10% march speed and infantry units in their troop gain 30% attack, which is really solid. Infantry needs that extra march speed. Now, whenever this commander uses the berserker skill, his active skill, their troop gains the following buff for eight seconds. The troop loses 5% defense, but infantry units in the troop gain 5% attack. This buff can stack up to 15 times and its duration resets whenever it gains another stack. Now this is where Harold loses a little bit more viability. This skill, it does kind of suck. And the reason why is because obviously trading defense for attack is not amazing. And when you're losing up to 75% defense for 75% attack, that's not amazing. Now, the duration resets whenever it gains another stack, so this will last for quite a long time because the Berserker skill is instant proc, so you have a chance to have that going basically every single round. So you can basically consistently get 75% reduced defense, so you don't really want to be in a situation where you're in the open field for too long firing off active skills because you are basically making yourself extremely, extremely, you know, susceptible to being swarmed down and taking a ton more damage, especially if you're in a murder ball situation and you're taking AOE damage, that really sucks because, you know, you're reducing your defense by 75% and increasing your attack, but you're only taking damage. You're not doing counterattack damage with AOE. So that really sucks. That's, I think, the biggest reason why I don't like Herald is for that one reason. That's really the only downside to this entire commander. Now looking at his force skill, if he is on the map, whenever it launches a basic attack, has a 20% chance to trigger the Berserker skill, 
and gain immunity to all defense debuffs for three seconds. Now, this is important because like I said, he has an instant proc damage. So when this is maxed out, he has a 20% chance to do his active skill every single time he fires off a normal attack. So the more you're attacking, you basically guarantee that you are going to get an active skill every five seconds, which is pretty fast. And you know, that's not just an active skill, but that's the extra triggered active skill. So you're still going to get your normal rage cycle, but you're going to get that extra one in one in five chance that you're going to get an extra attack, which is similar to Joan Prime. Like she has a very similar one, except you have up to 100% probability with Joan Prime. Now his expertise, if this commander's troop is on the map, their troop deals 20% more counterattack damage. That's extremely important as well. And if their troop is surrounded, it gains an extra bonus to counterattack damage dealt Bonus equals the number of surrounding troops times 2% up to an additional 20%. So you can essentially get up to 40% increased counterattack damage, which is pretty insane. And that's another reason why people like using Herald, because if you're getting swarmed down, you're actually trading extremely positive. Because not only are you increasing your counterattack damage, but you are also going to be doing AoE to those troops because of your extra skill damage being AoE. So you're doing more AoE. You are also gaining the Berserker skill every one in five chance. So basically one every five seconds. And then also being immune to defense debuffs for three seconds. So, you know, he obviously has a very interesting kit, in my opinion. I think he probably has one of the most confusing kits as well. I think people really don't really understand how he works. And I, I think his third skill is the one where he loses my interest the most. Obviously, I have him expertise, so I, I have used him. And, you know, his kills show that he knows how to kill troops. And this is not all from City Popping. I have used Harold extensively when I didn't have Pakal. And so when we talk about pairings with Harold, there are two pairings that people expect the most. And that is Pakal Harold, you know, the good old cheeseburger. And then we have Harold and Alex. Typically, it's Alex Harold. And that's, you know, that's honestly better, in my opinion, than Pakal Harold for city popping. Um, unless you get swarmed down, then you can die pretty quickly. But when you're using Alex and Harold, you are going to be firing off twice as many active skills. Because with Alex's instant proc, you're doing even more damage. And so, you know, the amount of damage you can do with Alex and Harold is pretty phenomenal. And if you could pair that in the open field, and not get attacked, you will trade insanely positive. I mean, like, look at Alexander the Great, about 50 million kills, and then look at Harold, about almost 30 million kills. Like, these two commanders are just killing machines. And the reason why is because of their active skill and because of their instant, instant proc, because they're doing so much more damage. They're doing, like, twice as many active skills as everybody else. So obviously, you're going to do a lot more damage. Now, will you trade as good? Not always, especially if you get swarmed down. It's, it's going to hurt, especially if you run, you know, Alex and Harold. It's especially going to hurt. That's why Pakal Harold is such a good pairing as well. But the best pairing with Harold, by far, is Scipio Harold. This is the pairing I ran in the open field for probably well over a year. And honestly, it was almost always my best trading pairing because Scipio provides the tankiness that Harold needs. And if you look at this, Harold and Sippy, Harold has more kills than Scipio, which is kind of insane. People are always shocked to find that out, that Harold is getting less kills than Sippy, and I didn't even use Harold, this KVK, this prior KVK. Scipio gained like five, five and a half million kills, I believe, around like five million kills, and he still has not passed up Harold, and I didn't even use Harold, this KVK. So, you know, that really puts things in perspective of like, how good Harold really is in the grand scheme of things and how he gets kills. Because obviously you want commanders are gonna you know benefit the open field as well, your other troops and your allies. But if you're looking at a commander that just gets kills, Harold, amazing. And I've seen people using Luce Harold as well, which, you know, especially for city popping, that's not bad either, because Luce is an amazing city popping commander. But with Harold, I mean, you have many different options for pairings. You have Scipio Herald, like I said. You have Alex Herald. You have Pakal Herald. You have Luce Herald. You can run Charles Martel Herald. You can run Herald with just about anybody. I mean, don't use him with Guan, obviously, but uh, just about any infantry commander you can pair him with. 
And, you know, he is going to trade pretty well. Um, I've even seen, you know, Tariq Harold. Uh, you could run Bjorn Harold for city popping. You know, there's just so many options with Harold. And like I said, he gets a really bad rap because people only see him as a city popping commander, but he can be used very, very well in the open field if you know what you're doing. And, you know, knowing how to avoid getting wrecked from this third skill is extremely important as well. You don't really want to stay in combat all the time with Harold because you're going to be increasing the amount of defense that you're losing over time. So you want to try to stay out of constant, you know, being in a constant battle because you're going to slowly increase the amount of damage you're taking from AOE. So you, you got to be able to fight on the outside of the lines, you know, in the back, on the corners. You don't want to be in the front lines with Harold because you're going to get wrecked from this skill. You have to be able to know how to fight with Harold to be able to trade positive. So he is a much harder commander to use in that kind of sense. But if you know what you're doing, you will trade so well with Harold, not only with city popping, but in the open field as well. So I'm curious what you guys think down below. Let me know what your thoughts are on Harold and whether or not you use him or if you're a Harold hater. There's a lot of those out there as well. So let me know what you guys think. Curious to see what you guys think about Harold. So let me know in the comments below. Thanks for checking out the video.